At this point, I'm going to pass the mic over to Mr. Johnson, our illustrious grade nine counselor, and he will be kind of working walking us through the different options available to students who are currently in grade nine and moving into grade 10, uh, which is our grad tracking. Yeah, good evening, everybody, and thank you for being here. Um, the first tile that I have up is welcome to the graduation track. And um, the first bullet point is that over the next three years, um, students, when they are entering into grade 10, are gonna require 80 credits to graduate. And that's the equivalent of 20 full-time courses at the grade 10, 11, and 12 level. So this means that credits start counting next year. And I'm sure that many of you might know that already, but just to be sure, it next year there's guardrails that go up and all courses that you take, you must uh, complete and pass. Grade 10 has a lot of requirements, <clears throat> but each year after in grade 11 and 12, the requirements become less and you get more options to choose. Sometimes the courses you take in grade 10 will set up what courses you can take successfully in grade 11 and 12, so you must choose carefully. Now, please note that your elective choices don't affect future elective choices. So the course selection form um, that we have will show a typical track of courses towards graduation. <clears throat> It's important that you take a serious interest in your graduation and post-secondary planning, because if not you, who will? And always ask questions. Okay, so we'll move on to the next one. Our school programs um, are French Immersion, Flex Humanities, LAC, and Summit. All of those programs, if your son or daughter is involved in them, they'll continue in grade 10. If you're in a program in grade nine, one of the above, it is assumed that you're continuing in grade 10. If you were not in one, you'll continue to be mainstream unless you apply and are accepted. And we'll move on. So the first thing, um, that we're going to talk about for next year, which is important for all grade 10 students, is the numeracy and literacy assessments. All grade 10 students <clears throat> will be taking a numeracy and literacy 10 assessment. It is a four-point proficiency scale, like with your grade 8 and 9 marks. The school sets them up for grade 10. So the times and places will be during school time and you'll be in computer labs and it will be done um, in, in one setting. Students can do two additional temps at a zero penalty. All of the assessments are not tied to any class, but are tied to the skills that you've built. <clears throat> the grade 10 assessments are not used by post-secondaries. However, in grade 12, you will write a literacy 12 assessment, which is used by some post-secondaries. And I've put down the uh, links to, the, to get more information about these assessments and where you go to. And it's uh, BC curriculum. And you can just Google anything on grade 10 literacy or grade 12 literacy, and it will direct you to the sites if you need more information. Okay, and we'll move on. Okay, in grade 10, all students are required to take a course called Career Life Education. So it's, um, it's a class about personal development, planning for careers, and learning about skills that will be important when you want a job. The French immersion students will have CLE as part of their four course package. And the easiest way to complete this course is on timetable. <clears throat> However, students may apply to take CLE off timetable, which will be for one semester, or you can do it with Vancouver Learning Network online. Um, when we get to the slide regarding um, the different streams, I I'll say this now that in the past, Flex Humanities are often taking this course 
off timetable so they open up a space to take an elective. But we can talk more about that um, in future slides. Okay, now we'll get to the math aspect. In grade 10, there are two pathways for math. Math 10, foundations and pre-calculus. About 80 to 85% of students take this option. It is the math that leads to university directly. It is generally considered more difficult. It gives students access to all the grade 11 math options. The focus, algebra, trigonometry, polynomials, functions, linear relations, etc. <clears throat> the second stream of math is Math 10 Workplace. About 15 to 20 percent of students take this option. It does not allow direct access to university. It is the preferred method for students going into trades. It allows access to most college programs. And you can check online or with me on the different college programs and their requirements. It continues with workplace math in grade 11. <clears throat> and the focus areas are measurement, trigonometry, wages, conversion, surface area and volume, and some other units. Uh, students may have a recommendation on the report card as to the suggested course their current math teacher recommends. Um, please ask me if you're unsure about which route to take um, to progress to where you want to go. For those students that have not taken math yet, um, what would happen in term two, if you're a term two student in math, um, if you're having difficulty, the recommendations will be made um, two thirds of the way or three quarters of the way through the term. If you're recommended to take workplace, then those recommendations will come. General rule of thumb for people is if you got a C, if you're like a C plus kind of standing or better in in math, um, it's it's good to stay in the uh, foundations <clears throat> as long as you can because it keeps the longer you stay in, the more doors stay open. However, you can still go through the workplace math and get to graduation. Okay. And generally, a lot of questions come up about this and happy to answer them at any time individually. OK, now the English requirements for next year. Um, we have uh, we, we kind of coined the phrase that it's four flavors mixed and matches. So students will choose a combination of two English courses. You will have the same teacher for both, and most of the time they are worked in together. <clears throat> so. Everybody is going to be taking literary studies, OK? But the literary studies can be combined with a second component of English. And they are outlined there, literary studies and composition, <clears throat> excuse me, literary studies and new media, literary studies and creative writing. And um, in the course planning um, module, um, online, you can get all of the detail on all of these courses. So those choices can be made. And it's important also for the students to know that if they select one of these courses and right up until maybe into May, early May, if a student wants to maybe change, they can come and tell me that they want to make a change before we start running the timetable for next year. So it's important that um, your son and daughter or daughter knows that the choices that they might be making now in the first term group or the second term group when I do course planning, they're not handcuffed to these choices in, in math and English um, until later into the springtime when we start having to run the timetable. OK, so that's an important thing for you to know as well, that that these choices have some flexibility. OK, the next um, tile is physical and health education. All students are required to take PE 10. It's the last year of mandatory PE. 
And um, if you want to in grade 11 and 12, there's tons of choices in, in uh, physical education 11 and 12 if you um, want to take those courses in future years. There's lots of choices. But next year, all students are required to take PE 10. Okay. The next one will be the language courses and skills. So first with the language courses, students can continue taking language classes. At the grade 10 level, we have French, Spanish, and Mandarin. You should have done the grade nine level course in order to take the grade 10 level. Um, and this important note that UBC requires a grade 11 language course. SFU requires a grade 11 introductory or full language level course. Um, other universities and college, colleges in BC do not. Some universities in Ontario and Quebec require a language, so you need to check online with those specific institutions as to what their requirements are if you're thinking um, of applying outside of the province. Okay, and worried about not having a language for UBC or SFU? You can take introductory 11 courses next year and be caught up real fast. So if you want, because if you take an introductory Spanish as an example, introductory Spanish 11 is nine and 10 in one year, and then the next year you can do the grade 11 and get the minimum requirement as an example. So if you want to switch, you can. Um, for those students that require extra assistance from the learning um, hub, uh, we offer skills blocks. If uh, you're a student with a designation, such as a learning disability, you're automatically permitted to take this course. All other students, including students who may have taken one in grade nine, must be accepted to take a skills class through a conversation with myself and the learning support teaching team. Okay. Now, this tile becomes really important for you to, to look at carefully. And you'll notice that there are five streams um, identified here. And in these vertical columns, you'll see mainstream French immersion, Flex Humanities, LAC, and Summit. So wherever your son and daughter is sits currently, if they're in one of those programs, you can look at what courses they're going to be required to take and where they're going to get choices or electives. So with mainstream, you see that the English, and we in the tile previously, you'll pick one of the three choices. You're going to be in foundations or workplace math. You're going to be in your science 10. Um, the summits are all together. Socials 10, summits are all together. Um, but for the mainstream, and then there's PE. So those five courses are locked in for you. Now, language, again, is like an elective. So if you're continuing in the, uh, in the language, that would make up your sixth course. Um, if you're dropping out of a language, you can select from any of the elective areas to replace it, uh, but that has to have approval from home and, and be discussed with me if you're dropping out of a language. Uh, the seventh course <clears throat> is CLE, and um, that course, if you take it if you choose to take it off timetable as a mainstream student, you can open up a space to take another elective course. Okay, the off timetable uh, choice is um, after school, and um, you'd have to have the ability to make sure you can attend those classes. And then the eighth and last course is an elective that you get to choose. And again, that would be from the course planning guide. And we will be going over that in class, but you can also do it um, on the school website. Take a look ahead of time. Other than that, there's all the off timetable courses for students that take um, um, music, choir, band, all of those. So then we go over to the French immersion. 
And you can see that the French immersion has the package where there's four courses there with the FRIM uh, label. And those courses are all in your package. You'll be in foundations of math or workplace math. You're going to be in your English. You'll pick your choice for English. You'll be in PE. And then you have your elective to choose. And also in the French immersion, um, you have some of you are doing your off timetable selections as well, continuing as, as similar to this year. So then we'll go into the flex humanities. Oh, hang on one more thing. On the French immersion, there is no provision for French immersion students to take CLE 10 off timetable. It is part of the package and must be on timetable. Okay, so now we'll go over to the Flex Humanities. Okay, well, the Flex Humanities, they have the four courses that are locked in as part of your program. The English 10 Classics, the Socials 10 World History, the Interactive Arts and Design, and the Film Studies. That's part of your package. All Flex students are in Science 10 next year. They're in PE 10. They're continuing in their language. Um, or CLE or an elective. If you're not doing a language, then you have other choices. It's recommended for Flex Humanities to do CLE off timetable so you open up that space for an elective. So if you're doing um, a language and you want to have space for an elective, then it's recommended you do CLE off timetable. And as an example for the grade 10s currently this year, I think 90% of the flex students uh, chose to take it off timetable. Uh, Mr. Van told me that from his grade 10 group currently. Okay, the LAC stream. If your son or daughter is in LAC, the courses outlined there are, there's three courses in the LAC. Humanities, Math, and Science. Um, then there is PE 10, and then there are four elective blocks that would have to be selected. So, and I'll be going over those uh, with your son and daughter if they if it applies. And finally, the last column are the uh, students that are in the Summit program. And again, there is a package of four courses that they all take and that's English 10 Lit and Composition, Pre-Calculus 11, Chemistry 11, Socials 10. Then they'll all be required to take PE. They're going to be um, continuing in their language, or if they're not, they have a space for an elective. Then CLE is on timetable, and then the eighth and final course is a choice of another elective. Okay. So again, um, you can take off timetable CLE if you want to have another elective open as a summit student. And everybody has their preference that way, and we can discuss one-on-one -on -one as needed. Okay, so we'll move forward. Elective choices are all coming out from Applied Skills and Fine Arts again. And the grade 10 is the year where we change to full length electives. So if you choose an elective next year, you'll get it for the whole semester instead of a half a semester like this year. And just like academics, electives now count for four credits towards graduation. And there is no requirement to take both an applied skill and fine art next year, but you need to take at least one of each of those during your three years in grade 10 and 12. So if you're a student that wants to take heavy amount of applied skills over the three years, somewhere in those three years, you have to take one fine art to fulfill the grad requirement and vice versa. If you're a fine art focused person, you'd have to take one applied skill somewhere over the three years. Okay. Next slide. Um, this is just a little extra that we have a mental health 10 leadership course that's off timetable that's taught by Mr. Van Ursel. It's on Wednesdays after school, 
excuse me, <clears throat> after school. And if you're interested in the topic of mental health, this is an opportunity for you to learn more. Um, and uh, the class is open to grades 10 to 12 altogether. It's built around learning about mental health, trauma, well-being, therapies, how to support others, and much more. There's a considerable number of guest speakers from local agencies, and you become one of the Here for Peers facilitators that the students may remember because the students from here at Van Tech, when they become a facilitator, they go to the elementary schools and do presentations. So that's also part of it. Okay, next. Okay, all about summer school fails and getting ahead. Students may make up courses they haven't passed in summer school. You're strongly encouraged in grade nine if you've not achieved well in, a, in an academic course to proceed and do it again so that you'll have a better grounding for, for next year when it does matter. Students can also use summer school to get ahead in certain courses, okay? And we don't know what that looks like until later in the springtime. So summer school applications open up in early May, and I will be posting the information about sign up when we get there. So if you are a student that wants to get ahead in a course, you can do that. Um, and then... Uh, we adjust your schedule accordingly, okay? So this next tile is about summer school fails and getting ahead a little bit more detail. Many students may choose to get ahead and taking a grade 10 course in summer school. Doing so means you can take an extra elective of your choice in the next school year. Okay, please note these things. Grade 10s will not have study blocks. If you complete a course in summer school, you get ahead on credits elsewhere, which means that you have to take other electives and you can proceed to get advanced, um, advanced credit. And also, if there is not enough room in a grade 11 course, so let's say that you do science 10 in summer school and you complete it, um, then the priority for if you wanted to go into chemistry 11 as an example, as a mainstream student, um, you would not be able to unless there's space because the priority goes to grade 11 students first and then a wait list for grade 10s that are eligible for that. So you need to be aware of that. Okay, next. Um, this is just about managing expectations. And whether you are trying to get ahead with courses, wanting to retake courses, or wanting to take two courses that run at the same time, sometimes there are limitations to what can be done in a schedule. So what that basically is saying to you that when the timetable is built, there can be restrictions and limitations to things, and you might not always get what you want. OK, so it's just important to keep that in mind in your in your planning. So when I do course planning, when I'm coming into and I and I'm using all of the social studies classes, so I'm I'm starting now for term one and about three weeks into term two, I'll be going into the socials classes for the term two students to do the same course planning. So there will be this form similar to last year where I will ask students to take it home, involve their parents and or guardians and get them to sign, which indicates to me that there has been a discussion that you've looked it over and that you agree with it. So um, anyway, so that form will be coming home when your son or daughter is doing their course planning with me. Okay. Next tile here is about planning for that thing called life. And as you start the journey into grade 10, you're working towards different goals ultimately, and everybody, their program becomes a little bit more refined. So I suggest leaving the door open whenever you can, and it doesn't harm to do so. If you didn't much like math, but you got a C plus, stay in the foundations course, and if you aren't sure what you want to go into, if you 
if you aren't sure you want to go into trades programs later. OK, so um, if you can stay in the foundations, it keeps more opportunities and doors open. OK, if it's a real struggle for you, it's not a problem to go into the um, workplace. It still gets you to graduation. It still gets you into um, colleges and <clears throat> many students. If they end up going to college first, they end up some students end up two year transfer programs and they upgrade in areas that they might be weaker in and then transfer into university. So it's it's not a it's not a complete end game if you come out of that path. OK, start having a look at post secondary requirement pages. Each school and program has different entry requirements. The more um, research you do on all that stuff, the better informed you'll be. Uh, use the resource package at the end of this PowerPoint. Read the course information on courses you're curious about and maybe even check out a post-secondary institution to get as much information as possible. Be informed is the best thing you can do. Um, <clears throat> some resources and help there for the Van Tech course planning guide. Um, again, it's on the school website. An overview of the grad program. There's a link. And then you come and see me. Um, and if I'm unavailable, you just write on my board and I will always get back to you. And you can also email me as well with any um, questions that you might have. Um, these are these pages show you the links on the um, school website. So you go under the guidance and support. Um, icon at the top there, click down on course planning, and then you'll get all the rundown of all of the courses available in the school, and you can read about each and every one of them um, in making decisions. And also when you're going through the guide um, digitally, some of them have this icon on the side that have a video enhancement as well that you, you can take advantage of for some courses. I really encourage you to get on the school website and access that information because um, it's all there for you. The same stuff I'm going over with your son and daughter in class. Um, entering your course selections. OK, so I'm the hired help this year to help ensure accurate information. All your course changes will happen through me. This means no students are directly using my ed software. Um, if you want to make changes to your course choices, you just come and see me or email me. Um, and that can be done. I will be all entering all of your choices through um, the form that you bring home or bring from home to me. I'll be entering it all by hand myself so I know it's accurate. OK, and again, you just see me if you need changes. OK, so we're pretty well done the presentation. If you have questions, uh, please reach out with those. Um, and of course, I will do my best to answer them to the best of my ability. And um, I want to thank you. And I hope uh, I hope that this has been informative and helpful. And uh, yeah, so look forward to working with your son and daughter and yourself to get this done and completed. And thanks very much. <laughs> thanks very much mr johnson and thank you um for coming thank you for being a part of this evening um the, the chat is still open so if there are some questions that might be um trickling in feel free especially if they're general questions um if you want more specific questions answered um whether you're a student or a family member uh please feel free to direct those directly to mr johnson and he'll be able to sort you out uh, but if there are general questions that you are wondering about uh, please feel free to continue to put them in the chat even um in the next few minutes uh before the the meeting ends um, and again, just wanted to say thank you very much uh, for your attention and for being here this evening. Uh, we do do our best to try and make sure students are supported. And, and these sorts of evenings, I, I know, um, or we hope, uh, uh, people find informative and kind of help you in terms of planning for the future. So again, um, 
thank you very much. And I hope you have a great evening and stay um, safe out there. Hopefully the weather cooperates or commutes tomorrow um, and take good care. Thanks everybody.